Technology's Promise with uh, Stanley Whittingham. I would love for Stanley Whittingham to join me on the screen, as well as the three provocateurs, Ahmad, great name, Beatty, and David. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, can we get seven minutes on the clock, please? Thank you, seven minutes. And Stanley, your dialogue starts right now. Okay, thank you. Um, as the Nobel Committee pointed out, I think some 15 months ago, they said they have laid the foundation for a fossil fuel society. Now, the technologies and the tools are there. We can solve the problem, at least mitigate climate change. And particularly, people talk about climate war warming. It's really, I call it climate messing up. We get extremes on both ends. And if we really mess up the climate, woe betide, I would say, London and Northern Europe. People don't remember London's as far north as the Hudson Bay. So if the Gulf Stream should shift, they've got real issues in Europe. So um, other key thing about um, the technologies we have, they can help the global warming issue, but they can also improve our resilience to natural disasters whether they're hurricanes in New York City or in the south of the states, or whether they're forest fires in Australia or California. If we have good technology in place, we don't rely necessarily on the grid alone. On fossil fuels, we will be in a better shape. And the bottom line is really um, renewable energy is viable. It's economically competitive with coal and um, oil and natural gas. Um, really, the big issue with um, renewable energy, it is intermittent. So the sun shines when it wants to. The wind only blows at certain times of the day and most predominantly at nighttime. So we have to have storage of some sort. And the predominant storage, certainly season to season, is pumped hydro. But I don't see any more of that happening in North America. No, the environmentalists don't really like us building big ponds. So the, the only really viable method is batteries of one sort or another. They are ready. They are you know, available now. And probably most of you know, the largest facility in the world started up in Moss Landing, California, about middle of December, 1.2 gigawatt hours of batteries. And they have the OK to go to six gigawatt hours. So we have the technology there. We can do it. The, the real issue are twofold. Batteries are not really sustainable today. It takes 60 to 80 kilowatt hours of energy to generate one kilowatt hour of a lithium ion battery. So we, we have to improve that. And one, one way of doing that is to have a much more localized um, supply chain. Right now, if you look at some of the elements like nickel, it may go around the world two or three times before it gets into your battery, whether it's for an electric vehicle or for, for grid storage. So we really have to solve that one. And what this means is we need what I would call regional supply chains. In the case of... Um, Europe, they're investing billions of dollars to get a supply chain where the raw materials will come from Scandinavia. They'll be processed in Scandinavia using hydro energy, so very clean energy. Those final products will then get shipped to, say, Germany for the auto companies. We have to do the same thing in North America. Now, I emphasize the word North because the United States cannot do it alone. We have to work with Canada and with Mexico. Canada has a lot of minerals we don't have. Canada also has the clean hydropower in Quebec province. And I'm sure they'll be excited to join with us. We have to get the governments to work together to um, get all their efforts in one place. But no, we have the technical solutions in place. But we now have to get the politicians and public on board. Without the politicians agreeing, 
without the public saying, yes, we need renewable energy, we need clean energy, and I, we're not going to invoke NIMBY, like I think the folks on Long Island are trying to do now to stop um, wind power being put offshore there. We have to put the really the, the source of the energy we need, where it's going to be used, wherever practical, and not ship it all around the, the country. So I think that we have to address that. Um, and really, in the end, it's our job to educate the population and the politicians to get them on board. Um, also, it's important to say we cannot do this alone. So if you looked at when we got the Nobel Prize, there were three of us. I was a chemist. John Goodenough was a physicist. Akira Yoshino was an engineer. It took three disciplines working together at different stages of the invention. It also took three countries. And I think most people don't realize that um, I made my inventions in the United States, even though I'm British. John Gordonough is born in Germany, but he's an American, but he made his inventions in England. And Okiro Yoshino is Japanese, and he was the engineer working in the company who could bring the, the best to fruition, but also involved heavy investment. In this case, it was Sony. But if we're talking about renewable energy, we're talking about the federal governments of the US and Canada needs to invest so we can compete with the rest of the world. We cannot rely on one country to supply all our batteries and in fact, all our electric vehicles, which is their goal. So we cannot stay alone. We um, must cooperate around the world, pull all together in one place. And I say, get all the politicians behind us, um, use all the resources we have to move forward. And I'm hoping that our present government is going to do that and without too much interference from the naysayers who don't believe in facts and don't believe in science. We have to believe in our science and move on from there. Thank you.